Okay, the assignment for this term. Right, you're familiar with the way this document's laid out to specify everything that you need to know about what the task is, when it's due in, how it's going to be evaluated, and so on and so forth. So, this is 100% of your assessment. There are nothing else you need to do other than write this article. The big challenge is to define and evaluate a new IT service using data from the Internet of Things and big data. That's can't do that as one thing. You've got to narrow it down. We'll talk a bit about that in a minute. Hand in deadlines. There is a final draft review on the 29th of November. Or the hand in date is then. And you will see me one after the other at the Monday session times and the Thursday after, late afternoon time, or Friday, Friday afternoon. Um, when I will see each of you for around about 10 minutes and give you guidance as to what the quality of the work you have written so far is and how you can improve it. This is something we start this year particularly. And then you will have something like four weeks to improve it, take account of the feedback which will be recorded in Turnitin in the usual sort of fashion, and then four weeks later, roughly, on um, 2nd of January next year, at midnight, is your final submission. So what I am expecting is that by the 29th of November, you will have pretty much finished off your article. In many situations, it's what would normally have been submitted as the final article. But by having that review in my office, you'll have submitted it in Turnitin, and I will mark it with you there and tell you how good it is. The interesting thing from your perspective is that having done this now for a couple of years, by giving you this formative review four weeks to improve it, and then final submission is worth, for this year, for second years, is probably worth about 10 to 15 to 20 percent improvement in your final grade. So it is worthwhile making absolutely certain that you ensure you come to this review that will happen in that week. It's worth a lot of points. Some of you will get plus 30 percent as a result of that review. Some of you, not surprisingly, for various reasons, will have various issues, and your final draft that you submit then will only be just started. In that situation, you will get two different marks. One that proves to you that what you already knew that it was rubbish and is not going to do very well if submitted like that. But also, I will give you an idea of how your topic can be developed. So that it could say, this has the potential for, let's say, 65% overall. Currently, it's worth 30%. So you know where you are going to be able to get to. But the idea is it could be really fantastic and you've just got to do that work in those last four weeks to turn it into something worthwhile. Now, what will also happen this semester is that during this session, we'll be introducing a range of new, of different ideas that affect how IT services are created and managed and made sensible and measured and all these sort of things. Give you some ideas about how IT services management connects to IT product development and connects to databases, because the whole stack. And you're going to need to draw on all of this lot as you address this topic. Then the workshops, Group A this evening, and Group B Friday, is it? Yeah. 
will be where you can start applying the new ideas from each uh, lecture session into your developing assignment and having discussions with me and with um, Winnie here that help you focus your ideas, develop your ideas and develop the article that you're writing at the same time. So ideally the workshops are where you take the ideas and pop them into the context of your assignment, the topic area of defining and evaluating a new IT service. You're developing your assignment while we are around to help you. And then you will keep on writing, obviously, during the week, uh, in between times. <coughs> the usual bit about the learning outcomes, which you talked about last week, all covered by this one assignment, not unreasonably. Here are some various thoughts about Internet of Things, about big data, some of the things that are being, they're being used for, uh, to give you a little bit of a background to the topic that helps you begin to think about how you can start researching. One of the things we've done here in the University of Derby, in this group, IT, uh, BSC IT, is to extend the traditional four, three, four, five Vs of big data to something like set, uh, 12 or 13 in the third year of modules, Enterprise Systems and Information Security Insurance. And you can find a little bit about the uh, big data analytics 12 Vs at that link. Big data and IoT are growing at Moore's Law rate of doubling every roughly 18 months. Staggering amount of data. One of the problems, however, as John Easton from IBM pointed out three, four years ago in 2012, is that actually, of all of that data, <coughs> something like 80% of all of that big data and the data from the Internet of Things is of what he called of uncertain veracity. By which he meant not that the data is wrong, <coughs> definitely, but we don't know in that 80% of data which is right and which is wrong, and that which is wrong, how much it is wrong by. It's unreliable. And we see around us, whether with IBM, with SAS, Tableau, Alterix, Click, all of the analytics platforms. Huge amount of work going into analysing this big data. And people are just making a basic assumption that if we have enough data, we can kind of iron out the impact of some of this unreliability. That may or may not be a valid assumption. And these 12 V's are 12 words beginning with the letter V that help us to ask interesting questions. Now, if you go back to 2003 and 4, when the first three V's were created, uh, volume, velocity, and variety, they were used to define what big data was. The volume, bigger than we know how to handle, the velocity coming at us at a staggering rate, like we know, with... YouTube is loading 100 hours a second type of thing, or whatever the number really is. And variety, not just structured data that the world knew about basically until 2003 and 2004 or wherever, and the, but with the development of the internet, we're getting more and more unstructured data that doesn't have formal grammar, doesn't have formal data definitions. Think about Twitter. Not only is that pure text, but it is badly written in terms of the standard syntax and grammar and vocabulary of normal natural human languages. It's Twitter language. And that is very, very difficult actually for machine language processing to actually cope with. We know that we're developing using stunning compute power and data and machine learning and so on and so forth, but we're now getting smart, smart connected transport, which has some interesting uh, issues.
huge numbers of different analytics platforms, many of which are pushing this thing called predictive analytics, trying to look into the crystal ball for the future. Because that's what businesses want to know, is what's going to happen in the future? Am I going to be able to sell this piece of clothing? How quickly is the market going to ramp up? And one of the problems with predictive is they tend to use fairly simple regression analysis, linear or quadratic, which goes like that or like that. And they never remember that things that start going like that eventually plateau. Where is the natural plateau? How do you build that into your algorithms? Because it's not very well built in. Certainly if you're using pure machine mechanisms, it's not going to pick it up. It'll pick up the sales that go like that at the beginning and say it's going to happen into the future. For the long-term future, perhaps. We have the situation also that, in, particularly in big businesses, but also beginning to happen in SMEs, in the larger end, the, in, the need to become more data-driven, less make it on the basis of the hunch of the owner or the managing director or the staff. They want proof. Analytics to prove it from the data. Have a look at that TED talk to get a bit of a background about some of the areas where it doesn't work out very well. So in that context, the assignment is to identify and critically evaluate a new IT service you can show might improve some aspect of a business by using one, of the, one or more of the many, many sources through the IoT of big data. And your focus must be on the user of the service. Over the next few weeks, we'll talk very, a lot about what a service is, what an IT-based service is, so you can get the context. But it's basically, a, let's call it an app, it could be a mainframe program, it could be all sorts of things that provide ideas, advice, guidance to the user about something. The ideas are going to go into a website that I and others are building. Big data, big data education resources and research. The best articles, the 65% and better, will hopefully be edited, edited together um, into an e-book, which means that the editor has a CV entry of editing and e-publication, and those who get their assessment above 65% and incorporated in that get a publication um, credit in your CV. The really interesting ideas will also go up onto this other website as well. <coughs> Your ideas will contribute as primary research to much of what I do in my conference uh, presentations uh, to businesses about the governance aspects of the Internet of Things, big data and analytics. <coughs> and I'm, there are now five different conference organisers uh, coming to me every year to present, uh, to present article um, presentations around the topics like this. It is fundamentally based on critical evaluation. There are technology aspects, differentiating between the service and the technologies. So the technologies are lower in the stack compared with the upfront front end, this is the service that is doing something for somebody. You must also justify the technologies which are being incorporated as to why they will contribute to the implemented service most effectively. You will also be using enterprise architecture, the Zachman enterprise architecture, and we'll, which is kind of quite an interesting one, which shows how this module fits alongside Dennis's module and Dave's module on databases, how they fit in the different levels. What's called the technology stack? 
And the final item, and too many of your predecessors over the last two, three years have kind of to forget about that one, that how do you measure the success of a certain IT-related service? We will be looking at that towards the end of the semester, but please don't forget to have your section on that topic. How are you going to measure it? What are the relevant measures? So the structure, there are four major sections. The introduction, setting the scene. What is this new service you want to create based on Internet of da uh, Things data? And what aspect of the user's experience, the user's <coughs> business, the user's needs, does your service actually satisfy? And what are the benefits? Chapter two is evaluating the types of technologies. For that, you could be looking at different big data analytics vendors and different aspects of the system technologies that they sell. <clears throat> the third chapter is all about architectures, the way that it fits together and answers six different questions, the who, how, why, where, what, when questions about the service, where it is, who's going to be using it, who's commissioning it, and so on. Answers all of those six questions. We'll look at the Zachman Enterprise architecture in two or three weeks' time, I think it is. And you must use the Zachman Enterprise architecture because that's a nice framework. The final chapter is how are you going to measure the success of your service? You will have to think about what are the criteria of success of your project, and then how will you measure those? So, a bit like your ICS article, which was a three page from the beginning of your introduction to the end of your last word of your conclusions, instead of being three pages, it is now five pages. Which excludes the front pages, you know, things like your title page, your name, University of Derby, your email address, abstract, uh, keywords, and table of contents. <coughs> That's out of the five pages, as is your references bibliography. That is also outside. And remember that it is five pages. I'll tell you exactly what the um, limits are. It's pl minus ze it's plus zero, so it's five pages plus zero lines, and it's minus ten lines. So you've got a ten line um, gap to aim at. Remembering, of course, that sometimes Turnitin does have a hiccup and a, a five page accurately on Word is going to suddenly turn into five pages in two or three lines. Well, I catch that and you will not be penalised. There are, you will, you will find all of the Springer LNCS fold, files in the folder, guidance, the template and uh, something else is there as well. There's three files there. There are two variations from the spring, standard Springer LNCS uh, template, which are that you will use English spelling, UK English spelling, not American English, and you will use Harvard rather than uh, the normal, uh, the requested um, numeric. However, I will want the numbered Harvard list sorted into alphabetical order, as we did last year. Your bibliography will only contain references or sources you have cited in your writing. I do not wish to see the reading list that you've got. That's for different, that's for different purposes. I want to see just the um, sources that you have cited. The usual sorts of things about uh, submission. Final draft review. 
week 11. And I will put out a uh, timetable near the time. And then there will be the final submission, midnight, 3rd of January. And I will be marking your articles during the exam week, the first week of exams, 3rd to 6th in my office. Is it the 2nd or 3rd? So the top is says 2nd, and then mm. the rest The... Should be, sorry, that's probably, it should be the second, thank you. So that is an error there, second. Thank you very much, good thinking. Yeah, it'll be 3rd, 4th, 5th, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the days I'm going to be assessing both this module and sustainable information and corporate governance. So, go on the number at the top, I'll fix this and get it resubmitted uh, a bit later on. As with ICS, whoops, if you don't have any citations or references, you're capped at 35%. Because it's a fairy story. So you're not going to do that. You're going to put some citations. You might not put very many, in which case that's going to drive your grade in a couple of points. As always, um, you have presentation mark 20% which represents both the cost to the editor of correcting your failings but it also drives employability because you need to learn how to use this template and other templates uh, and get things like spelling and all the other bits and pieces right because otherwise next year your bosses are going to or your supervisor is going to reject your reports until they look right or meet the corporate standard <coughs> Four main chapters have four sections, even equally weighted. Now, up here you'll see various uh, terms. These come from the <coughs> broader <coughs> university guidelines for assessment criteria. So I'm looking at critical thinking, knowledge, and the way you communicate for introduction and benefits. This is what it's about. This is a new service, and this is why it's a good idea. Evaluating technologies looks at your knowledge, your practicality, your ability to evaluate different ideas and compare and contrast and synthesize and put them into practice. As, so evaluating architecture, same set, and measuring success, same sort of factors. Now, again, this is how I'm going to mark it. But it's also, as I explained when I was talking to you a year ago in ICS, Interactive Computer Science, these criteria here help you both to choose your topic and def help you to work out how you are supposed to write the article. So again, bringing together some of those terms, those words, in a top as to what's being assessed, you can see <laughs> critical analysis is absolutely fundamental if you want to get that 95% level in all of those factors. Comparing, contrasting, and bringing ideas together, coming up with something new and novel. Very, very important. Lots of knowledge based on your research from everywhere. This one, or the, these two, you know, you're looking at understanding the context, understanding how to apply technologies on the basis of the context. And then, this is really the critical one. The last bit is sweeping across everything and saying, overall, this article is suitable for presentation at a national research conference. It's got that quality that you could go to almost any conference in the UK at a university. The 85% one says, well, it's not quite up that level, but 
is certainly good enough to present at the University of Derby annual research conference in January, February time. You would not be disgracing yourself, even as a second year student, first semester, standing up there and presenting this. And that's actually an interesting little part of this marking scheme that makes sure that your final grades are almost always accepted by the external without change. Because externals and colleagues in the university who moderate these say, yeah, that's correct. Or the national one is correct. And if that is the case, it cannot be less than that mark. Now the point about all of this is that, let's go back to the top one. What we are looking for is a level of authority that convinces the reader that it's good. Now one of the things you need to be thinking about in the second year is comparing your writing with what you see in terms of academic papers that you, you research and thinking about the quality of their writing, is it clear? Is it about something groundbreaking? Is it persuasive? Does it communicate well? Because one of the things you're going to notice is that some of those papers are written in language that no one ever uses. It's incredibly difficult to understand what they're saying. And yet those are the ones that often are counted as being the most academic. And you think, hang on, does anybody know what you're saying? Can you understand it? I remember going to a professorial um, inaugural uh, speech at a university ten years ago. And he was a lawyer, he was an international lawyer of enormous repute. And he was talking about his field of research in international law of some sort or other, and he was using a cricketer, that, uh, um, cricketer from this, uh, Ceylon, Sri Lanka, Muralitharan, who at that time had a suspect arm action. Was it bent or was it straight? Did he throw the ball or did he bowl it properly? And he was using... Sentence structures were of the nature where if a thousand words and 50 clauses, subclauses, was possible, he would use it instead of a sentence of 10 or 15 words, which we would normally use. And I am absolutely convinced that of all the lawyers in the audience, there was not one person who understood what the guy was talking about, other than that this guy, Muralithran, had a problem with his arm action, which is kind of vaguely related to whatever else it was he was talking about. And you don't want to write that sort of thing. So if you can use nice, simple, clear English that explains what it is you're about, compares and contrasts different ideas, different technologies, in a way that is well connected to your topic area, then you're going to do okay, guys. You are not trying to write this bizarre form of academic writing which no one can understand. We don't want that. It won't get good marks, it'll get down in the 40s probably, because who knows what you're saying. Fortunately, I don't think any of you are going to be tempted to do that. But I want you to think about clarity. Clear story that you're going to be telling. Ultimately, what you're doing is to write a clear story of your research and the consequences of your research in delivering a successful IT service based on IoT big data that gives benefits to somebody that you will define and that you can measure the success of that service. 